All right, guys, today my guest is alligator expert and wildlife conservationist Frank Alligator Rob. And Frank became a Chicago legend when he caught Chance the Snapper in Humboldt Park Lagoon in 2019. He's going to tell that story and lots of other great facts and interesting things about alligators and how they can help us learn about and even cure disease. And this is a really fascinating episode coming right up. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking the time. Uh, it was just like random that I, I came across that you had done another podcast, the Spear Talk one. And so I listened Indeed. to that. Like, this is a really good uh, episode. I think I want to reach out and see if you'll do mine. So thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Uh, I, no I problem. A lot. He was a What's good. Dude. He was a good man. That was a that was a fun chat. Yeah, I, I've I've learned a lot about uh, alligators. Uh, just studying for this uh, episode and um, listening to you talk as well. And uh, I think we got a lot to talk about here. So, but first off, yeah, can you explain to my audience just your background a little? I, I heard you talk about, obviously, on the other podcast about how your dad was a uh, land surveyor. So you would, that's kind of how you got uh, accustomed to nature and wildlife and all that, right? Yeah. Uh, as a kid, man, early on, uh, seven, eight years old, you know, I remember going out and cutting property lines with my dad, you know, being a professional land surveyor, he'd turn an angle and be like, we're going that way, however many hundred feet. And, you know, so we'd take a machete and get machetes and start cutting property lines. And in doing that, we'd come across, uh, you name the things, uh, snakes, bats, all kinds of different lizards, whatever it might be, uh, insects, spiders, of course. And he would break them down for me and tell me, tell me what each of the things were. And then uh, as I got older and got more interested in wildlife, I guess as I was a freshman in high school, I started helping my uncle, who was the then uh, alligator trapper for the state of Florida for the Space Coast over here where I'm at. And uh, who would have ever imagined it would have become a career? Yeah, well, you got a bio, what is it, a biomedical degree or something? Yes, sir. You have a biomedical background. Yeah, so after years of doing that work with him, um, yeah, he's he was the rare one of the, the group of like 30 different people that were in the state doing that work at the time that actually had a conservation ethic and I wanted to I wanted to see and learn more about the human benefits of crocodilians to us and our health so I went back to school got the biomedical medical degree and started really digging into the more research and scientific side which is kind of where I was at from the beginning anyhow you know I've been part of and helped with studies involving everything from endocrinology and toxicology to uh, parasitology you you name it uh, satellite tracking whatever it might be I've done a little bit of a little bit of stuff with it uh we just did some did a lipid study i mean you you name us so i'm even working with a group of paleontologists out of georgia now it's uh pretty amazing i allowed me the, the ability to start my own nonprofit and start doing this stuff i mean next week i'm in uh, i'm in belize catching crocodiles next week where we're doing more research down there so it's been okay. a been a journey buddy Absolutely. Well, yeah, we'll, and we'll get into the health benefit things at the end. I, I have some uh, questions about that. But first off, uh, I think the most uh, common question I, I would assume that you at, or get asked, or at least for me, is the difference between alligators and crocodiles. So, and I think I, I figured out it's, it's, it's kind of some subtle things, the shape of the snout, the colors, freshwater, saltwater, right? Are those kind of the main things? Well, in order to break it down completely, you have to understand that they're all crocodilians. And there's 26 different species of crocodilians around the world. They're in every subtropical climate on the planet. They're they're there. Uh, they're a semi-aquatic animal. I mean, there's different species that don't even live in water, but it's uh, alligators, crocodiles, caiman, and gharial. Uh, that kind of breaks it all down. There's two different species of crocodile: American crocodile and Chinese, or American alligator and Chinese alligator. And then you have your crocodile, your crocodile species, your caiman species, and stuff like that. But they're all different colors. They're all different shapes. Uh, crocodiles traditionally have a they have a nasal disc where alligators actually have nares or two separate nostrils. It's yeah, so a head shape, color, uh, the scutes or the armor on their back is all different. Uh, the osteoderms, there's, if you see two of them beside each other, there's no real similarities other than they're both being large reptiles. Okay. Yeah. And the, the crocs are more aggressive, right? Typically. It depends on the species you're dealing with. I mean, if you're talking about American crocodiles, they're actually even more shy than the American alligator. Oh, really? There's, there's only, three of those uh out of the all the, those 26 species that are actually uh listed as man eaters uh, so, but yeah nothing we have anywhere around here would it's just in order to have that kind of interaction with a with a crocodile you have to 
be making some very bad life decisions for the most part. Right. Oh yeah, and we'll get into that too. But yeah, so it's, it's interesting because there's only uh, so everything else is a crocodile. The only two, like you said, it's American and uh, the Chinese alligator, or uh, the American ones live in the U.S. and and Mexico too, right? Yes, uh, southeast United States, actually all the way into Oklahoma now. Uh, we do research in North Carolina, and there's there the northern and North Carolina, and yes, there are some alligators in Mexico too. Yeah. And is the biggest population actually in Louisiana? Because everyone thinks Florida, but Louisiana might actually have more. Yeah, we have a solid million here in Florida. They have four million in Louisiana. Oh, it's that much of a difference? Dang. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's that big of a difference. Wow. And so the they're typically about 13 feet, but the biggest one ever was 19 feet. Is that is that about right? It's pretty special. If you see an alligator that's uh, you know 10 or 11 feet, it's something very special. That's your... Typical full-grown bull, 10, 11 feet. You'll see it. They're just like people. They're all individuals. So occasionally you'll see one that might grow to a big 11 or a 12 or like the rarity, the rare exception is a 13, but it's uh, it's very uncommon. Those are what we would call the local generals. Okay. You know, might run a, you might run a multiple, multiple huge areas to be so that, that size. So that 19 footer is like that, that record might never be broken. <laughs> no, it'll never be broken. No. Okay. No, it's there's, it's uh, it's rare these days. If you like, I said, if you see a you see an, a big eleven or a twelve, it's a rare thing. But how long do they typically live? Because I, I thought I read something like we don't know their average lifespan. Like some of the ones in captivity have lived into their eighties, but we don't t- actually know how long they actually live for. They'll that, that's an interesting question. You know, they'll live as long as a person. Um, you know, I live live and work down here at the Kennedy Space Center, and you know, a lot of those gators out there are you know they're they're ancient. It's on a wildlife preserve too. So I mean yeah. you'll see gators out there 60, 70, 80 years old. But uh we know in captivity they'll live to over 90. Um it's in the wild. There's the longest term study going on is actually up in the uh in the Carolinas. It's a fellow named Phil Wil- Wilming's uh up is Phil what is Phil's last name? He works for Clemson. Anyhow, they were they've been doing a study up there for 38 years and a couple of years ago, they had caught one of the gators that they had caught 37 years previous. And this was a seven foot seven female on a nest. And they had pictures and documentation of the same animal from 37 years previous, where she was still seven foot seven on a nest. And they said everything measured the same, just like people when you get when you get to a certain size, when you top out a certain size, that's just where you go. And uh, they're they're a lot of times genetically the same way. Yeah, it's interesting too. I didn't know this that um that alligators the the sex of the of the the gator is not determined by DNA but it's by, by climate. So if it's warm it's it's going to be a boy and if it's cool it'll be a girl. So you could in captivity you could manipulate that, right? Yeah, that's one of the interesting things about crocodilians. The 1 degree positive or negative can turn them male or female. Uh that is the case unless there's environmental toxins involved. And like I was saying, that's what's interesting with the endocrine system. You know, we, the, the reproductive hormones or the endocrine homo- hormones are the same on crocodilians as they are on us. They're 99.9% the same. So when these endocrine disrupting chemicals, like forever chemicals, PFAS, you know, everybody's heard about those at this point. When those are involved in the environment, they determine the sex of the animal. So something to think about because those are the same yeah. chemicals affecting us. That, explain that because I think there's a lot of... Uh conspiracy theory or what it it's being labeled as conspiracy theory that that like i know with frogs and stuff the sex can change based on some of these toxins and they can uh right i mean is that so this is there's yeah, a 100 percent yeah yeah they're endocrine disrupting disruptors uh that's what forever a lot of the forever chemicals are been plenty of p- papers published on it uh plenty of scientific articles published on it they look up endocrine disruptor and that it pretty much gets you as far as you want to but again so with crocodilians very close to identical reproductive hormones for us and these uh chemicals get in there and they they change a lot of things uh it's a, it's a detailed discussion on its own but so they can, can they, they can get in there and change it can they make the animal gay is that really a thing or is that just like a conspiracy theory uh, i've never heard that one buddy oh, <laughs> but they can change the <laughs> sex they can ch- change yeah. male or female yeah it's a it's that's a yeah they can ch- change male or female Okay. Because again, it's it's one degree positive or negative that's with so a uh, with a yeah. crocodilian. That's so interesting. So and I didn't realize how smart uh, these alligators are. Like I saw this video online of the 
the animal, the alligator, he was pushing his way through a wrought iron fence. And he just got, you know, those wrought iron fences, they think that they're going to keep the alligators out and they just push their way right through it. I mean, they must be strong too, to do that. Yeah, there was a lot other going, a lot of stuff other going on in that uh, the video you speak of. They were, he was being harassed pretty bad. He wanted to leave where he was at very badly. Uh, so he was, he was getting the heck out of Dodge. But yeah, when they want to go through a fence or under a fence, uh, they pretty much, they can make it work. It's insane though. I heard you talking about like, if you went, if you had to go to like a golf course to catch one, you have to dress like a golfer. Like if you come in like your rubber boots, they can, they can spot you. You have to like go undercover they, basically. Th yeah. They never forget any interaction they have. <laughs> right. So you got to keep in mind. Uh, I always joke that they're not doing their own taxes or their own kids calculus homework. They're survivors. It's <laughs> yeah. what they do. They're working right. on surviving and nothing else. So any experience they have, they're consistently putting that in their brain. They're going, okay, this, this was okay. This was okay. Man, I saw a guy today that wasn't wearing a dress shirt on this golf course and he rocked my world, man. He had a fishing rod and who knows what was going on, but they, hmm. it's weird things that stick out. Uh, they're noticing things that okay, that guy's not dressed the same. The, this guy has a different pattern. He looks different. They're, a lot of the old school guys I learned from a color, carry different colored hats with them, color, carry different colored t-shirts. Uh, if, if you have an interaction with one one time in a certain vehicle and you don't catch him, they'll remember what your vehicle sound like. They'll remember what you sound like talking. They remember what you smell like. They just, they never forget these kind of things. They're geniuses in their own right. They really are. If people knew how smart they really were, it would scare the daylights out of people. Like, give me another example of like something really smart that they do. They, so let's say you're, you live on a pond and you come home every day at five o'clock. And the first thing you do is you take your dog out and you go down the edge of the pond, you put the dog off a leash and he runs down the water and he runs back and forth and he barks. You might not ever even see an alligator. There's going to come a day when you do that one time. And that gator had been over there on the other side of the pond taking notes for months He's going to be right there waiting at five o'clock and he's going to pick your dog up and you're never going to see a splash. It's just, it, people take things for granted, right? It's uh, it's not that the, an alligator is a bad animal. It's not that a crocodile is a bad animal. They're looking for opportunities and all they have all day is time to sit back and take notes and digest things and think about the opportune way to make an ambush and make it work out. They're just, there's nothing better. They are an apex predator for a reason. Yeah, and so they, they do attack dogs. Is that pretty common? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't call it an attack. It's just it's they they're doing what they do. They're catching a prey item. You know what I mean? They just they're they're handling business. Do they? Unfortunately, like there's people yeah. that uh, you know. I'm a dog person. I love my dogs. I would never put my dogs in that situation. There's some people that take for granted the fact that it's never going to happen until it actually happens. So, because I don't live in Florida, I've only been there once, but. You probably shouldn't walk your dog near bodies of water. I mean, is that kind of the. Yeah, no joke. If you, uh, you tempt the devil, bad things will happen. Right. I mean, you doesn't matter if your dog's on a leash or off a leash or what's going on. If you're walking your animal near water, you are, uh, not putting his, his best interest in, interest in mind by any means. And is that what happened at the, the Disney world thing where the kid got eaten? Cause that was really strange. Like. People, I didn't, that was think, a terrible situation. Yeah, like what I, did people just not think that there would be gators inside the park like that? Well, those were people that weren't from you know weren't from this area. I don't think they'd ever had an interaction with an alligator, and or even maybe even see an alligator. Who knows? And they just that's a terrible that's just a terrible thing, man. Sometimes bad things happen, and that was uh, that was one of those. Well, it was a a, a gator in an area that would in an area that was known for feeding and they wouldn't have known that they wouldn't Wasn't have known that. Was there so. signs or something? I think there, there was warnings. Right? I, I believe there were signs. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, again, if you've never, if you've never seen or watched or interacted with an alligator, even the sign there, you're probably not going to really get a grasp of how thing, how bad things can go uh, very fast. If you've never really watched one interact in person before. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, it was really fascinating. Um, and then I heard that they, they killed all the alligators and they said they probably didn't even get the one that, that, that ate the kid. So it's like, why did they kill the alligators? Cause like you said, they're just acting on instinct. Uh, I don't really understand the strategy behind that. It seems like maybe they need when, a bigger fence or something. When there's a loss of life, uh, the answer is to take that animal. It's, it's a tough, that's a tough discussion. Um, yeah. you know, that we're more important than they are. It's sad to say that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we, we come first. Uh, sometimes even with that animal made a mistake, 
for future liability reasons and for the the future health of anybody else there, the thing to do is to move on from that from that one animal. But it's it's a tough topic, man. It's uh, there's no it's a it's a bad situation for the animal. It's a bad situation for the person, obviously. When when something like that goes down, you know they everybody loses, including the including the, the animal does. Right, but that's more rare because typically they're eating um, uh, just fish and snakes and turtles and other smaller mammals, right? It depends on the size of the alligator. I mean, they start off, you know, as little guys. Uh, I mean, not a whole lot bigger than that, and they're eating water bugs and whatever they can get their yeah. get their little mouths on. They work their way to to minnows uh, and. Uh, and frogs and then work their way up from there to when they're getting to a bigger animal their favorite some of their favorite foods are turtles and fish and eventually other alligators and snakes and you name it yeah it's what I, I thought i read that they sometimes eat fruit and vegetables and, and stuff like that which was i mean it's like not a bulk of their diet but there's a little bit of that yeah so there's been a big uh discussion about that in the crocodilian community for a while the fact that Supposedly, they they're not able to digest fruits uh, and things of that nature, but they're consistently doing that. I mean, we find them over here uh, eating saw palmetto berries quite often. But, oh yeah, that's one of those things that's actually used for different endocrine cancers in people, mm -hmm. like prostate cancer. Yeah. So we always wondered if them with them having the same endocrine hormones, if they were self medicating, or if they were just using those as gastroliths, because they do eat rocks and stones and things and use them as gastrolytes or things that go inside their stomach to grind everything else up because they're eating, you know, they eat some pretty rough, rough things. Yeah. I saw this one. It was like a video. It was, obviously it was in captivity. So it was a dead chicken, but they gave him a chicken and he kind of like threw it up and then like re swallowed it. It was kind of interesting to see how, is that kind of <laughs> to break up some of the bones or something? Uh, I've never seen one do that, but they, they'll, uh, Sometimes it, it depends on the animals a lot. A lot of them like something that's fresh and you got some that'll leave stuff and lay and let everybody else chew on it too. It's one of the things that makes them a keystone species. Whenever they eat, everything else eats with them. The other, the minnows that are there, the turtles, uh, the other gators, everything else eats whenever they eat. Why is that? That's just, they share, you know what I mean? They're just, they're not exactly clean eaters. They oh, things, go every, things go everywhere as oh. they eat. Okay, if they can makes... just get those hands out there and use their forks and knives, you know, they can just. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, explain to me um, the sounds, because I heard some really interesting sounds that the alligator makes. And I heard you talking about how there's different sounds like happy and distress and sad. And and uh, I mean, some of them are like it sounded like something from Jurassic Park. And some of it sounds almost like pigs <laughs> oinking. And it's really fat. One of them sounded like a vacuum cleaner. It was really weird. It's hilarious. Yeah, they have uh, hisses and growls and chirps. Uh, some species have pops and clicks. They're all a little bit different. It's a study that I've worked on for quite a while is putting the, together the vocalizations of all the species. It, it helps when you go to another country somewhere to be able to speak whatever species of uh, animal that is, be able to say, hey, please come here. Come here and have a conversation with me. Let's uh, let's have a chat so I can catch you, please. But it's uh, they all they all sound very different. Um, they, like the American crocodile sounds very bird-like in comparison to the American alligator. They just, they're all different tones, pitches, and it's, it's, they, they all have different dialects too, depending on where they're from, and just you, like a person. Okay. So, and you've been able to study that and kind of like diagnose what the, what the different sounds mean. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're guessing for the most part, you, <laughs> I mean, there's obviously there's contact, there's sounds whenever you make contact with one, there's sounds when they're scared or upset, there's sounds whenever they're, uh, when they're happy or you're releasing them and they're talking to one another, there's different, there's definitely different things there for a lot of it. You're having to make, a, make a few assumptions, but it's just, it's things from years and years of watching them oh, okay. and observing them. Interesting. I also found it interesting that they, um, they have 3000 teeth over the course of their lives. Like they, they, they lose them and just regrow them all the time. It depends on the animal. Uh, if it's a healthy animal, they'll keep regrowing them. So they grow like snow cones inside one another. They're stacked up. Uh, so their their teeth are hollow. They're all stacked inside of each other like a bunch of solo cups. So it's not like sharks <laughs> huh. where they fold out. They're actually they actually have seed teeth that keep growing inside the other tooth. So th yeah, if it's a healthy animal, they'll keep growing teeth for a long time uh, for for all their life. If they get some scarring or they get their gums scarred their teeth won't grow back at all. It kind of depends on what they go through. Occasionally you see teeth that get impacted. They grow out the wrong side of their head too, like horns. They're pretty awesome. Wow. But that's typical crazy. alligator has 80 teeth, 40 on the top, 40 on the bottom. 
And then, you know, as they need replacements, they're automatically there and just ready to go. Wow. Um, yeah. So another thing that's kind of interesting about, uh, I guess it's kind of rare that uh, female reptiles would like carry and look after the babies, but with alligators, they do. Yeah. Um, females, females will stay with the hatchlings sometimes for a year. I mean, I've seen occasions where the females are with the hatchlings for multiple years. Uh, there's some spots again down here in the Kennedy Space Center where you'll see generations of hatchlings together. You'll see four or five, six years of different groups together. And the male and the female both together. There are there are instances where the male will also take care of the the young. But then also sometimes it, the the female eats they eat the baby alligator, right? It, they're it's they're an interesting group, buddy. Every it's like it's just like <laughs> the people. It's just like the people. Yeah. Some are some are a little strange. You know what I mean? They're they're all individuals. They're all different. They all have different ideas on how things work. Yeah, because it's something like they said. Uh, that it could the the litter could be from multiple male alligators. So then sometimes they eat the ones they don't like or or something like that. I don't really understand it, but yeah, it's uh yeah it's the second you think you understand something with wildlife, or you can you kind of like put your thumb on it, like oh man, that's the way it is. Every single time you see something, and you go, man, I don't know nothing. I don't. I really know nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, there's always the oddball in the group. You know, what I mean, where you go. That goes against anything I've ever learned. I'm not sure what to even say about that. Right. No, this is fascin fascinating stuff. Explain the, um. it's not a hibernation period, but they go through this like dormancy thing or something where they go into a, what is it called? A gator hole? Yeah, well, so it de it depends on the time of the year. You know, down here where we're at in the Space Coast, they're pretty much going all year, year round because it never really gets that cold. But they do have uh, times where they'll find a spot to overwinter or relax. Uh, that's typically... You know, November to February, depending on how the how the winter season's going. I know here in Florida, our first cold front's usually plus or minus a week of Halloween. So that's usually where you start seeing everybody kind of what we do. We call it a fall crawl, where they all get up and crawl where they're going to go, stay to the one spot, and you'll see them again in the springtime. But yeah, they, they actually, like a turtle, they can get cold stunned too. So they can, uh, everything will be real good, and they can be out in the open water and get super cold, and it actually, it'll knock them out and just make them seem like they're dead but they're not they're just kind of dormant yeah, just in suspended animation pretty much and how long can they stay like that uh i guess it depends i mean i've seen them so, uh, frozen in solid ice too and be able to thaw back out the next day and be good to go it's just <laughs> they're they're so tough man if we were wow. even a percentage as tough as these guys were we'd be uh we'd be good to go yeah and so they're uh, what do you call it, like an apex predator like they don't really have any uh predators except for is it the snapping turtle is that their only thing they fight with well as you know as when they're young when they're first put out everything eats them I mean, that's the whole thing uh -huh. with reptiles huh. why we, why reptiles have so many young when they're little you know snakes or alligators whatever it might be they, everything's trying to eat them birds otters other alligators uh fish turtles you name it everything's after them everything's trying to eat them and as they get older, those things start to get fewer and fewer. But I mean, up until their oh. four or five, six foot range, otters are still eating them. Uh, yeah, otters are crazy with an alligator. They'll pill them like a banana. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. Oh. Uh, bobcats are still eating them up until like about the four or five foot size class here and there. Um, it's not until they get to that probably seven or eight foot size class. Other than each other, there's not a whole lot messing with them. Interesting. So that makes sense why the moms are kind of have to look after them then. Oh yeah, they're food for everything. It's uh, that's the way reptiles in general work. Uh, snakes and alligators, both snakes and crocodilians, both. They have multiple young because it's only about one in a hundred, or you know, one in about three nests that makes it to be a four foot animal. Okay. Wow. Interesting. And it's, and it's probably closer to one in ten times that that makes it a ten feet. Okay. So with yeah, the, everything stacked against them, buddy. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that's the their predator is is us, is the freaking humans. So I, we and we talked about the Disney World thing. Obviously, stuff like that is bad. But um, you say a lot of the bad incidents happen because humans are feeding alligators, and then so then they they're not afraid of them, and and then they bad things happen, right? Yeah. So an alligator's biggest uh, strength is also his biggest weakness, which is his, his intelligence. Right. It only takes them one time of seeing someone go out to a pond and feed the fish or the turtles or something out there but then go man i ain't gotta work for a living i can just go over here and wait till this dude throw some food in the water i can pick it up i can save all my energy i'm good to go you know he again one of those things where 
he's out there every day at nine o'clock feeding the fish. I'm not gonna I'm gonna be right there. I'm gonna catch myself some fish. I'm gonna eat some bread and man, the rest of the day is just a jam. Like I don't need to do anything else. They they're consistently thinking about ways to save energy because energy is their money. Hmm. That's and is that that's probably not good for them too, though, right? Isn't that bad for them like mentally or uh um... oh I'm sure but when you're doing that, of course, you're making them more uh, more used to people. And that's one of these bad interactions are happening for sure. That's it makes it more likely for something crazy to happen. Again, do they have murder on their mind? Of course not. But it's going to make them more likely to t approach a person, which is going to make the odds of that bad wildlife interaction go up and up. So what yeah, what is this thing? Because I saw like on TikTok or YouTube or whatever it was, it was like these women swimming with alligators and they're not even wearing a wetsuit. They're wearing like wearing like a bikini. I'm like, this seems like they're playing with fire here. Am I wrong? There's a lot of different people doing a lot of things right now. Uh, a lot of it's all about clicks and views. Um, that's what what most of it is. Everybody wants to be a YouTube hero. Uh, it's uh, and they they almost think the sillier things they can do, the the more clicks they're gonna get, which is what happens. Uh, people have kind of lost track of reality and it's given, it's given people the whole wrong idea. And really that kind of thing, in my opinion, is encouraging. It's moving us away from conservation and even things that matter. It's bad information. It's, it's one thing. If, I don't know. It's, it's such a fine line between reality and it's like reality and reality TV. We know they're not the same thing. We know they're two different animals, one's entertainment and who knows what the other one is, but reality is something that people kind of need to come back to because we've completely lost it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I feel like there's going to be some, so maybe they'll go viral, but I feel like it, some woman's going to be swimming with an alligator and it's going to bite her. And then it's, I mean, they get video of that, I guess it'll go viral, but then people are going to get mad at the alligator. And it's like, they're just acting on instinct. The human is being the idiot. It, even putting stuff like that out there for people, you know what I mean? Like, like a lot of these groups are doing, it's uh it's all, it's you're, you're encouraging people to go do silly things. And that's where it all starts, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's like, it's like oh man, they got away with it. I can go get away with it too. Yeah. Right. Why why aren't we doing that? Yeah. Like it just makes me shake my head. Right. Exactly. And because some of the videos I've seen are just, they're not trying to make a video. They're trying, you know, like I saw this one where the guy was fishing with his kid and the kid's getting his fish. And then this alligator comes up and steals the fish. And that wasn't like they weren't trying to make a viral. That was actually kind of cool. It didn't hurt the kid, just, just took his fish. And then uh, have you seen the one where the, the, the guy's, uh, uh, his puppy gets, uh, stolen from an alligator and the guy jumps into the water and gets the puppy back. Yeah, it was ironic how there was a camera pointed at that. Wasn't it? It was interesting. You think that was staged? It's interesting. I don't know, man. It was just, it was very interesting. It, it raised some questions in my head that I was like, Hmm, that was weird that there was a camera pointed at that one weird spot in your lake. That's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know huh. what it was. I'm not saying one way or the other. It just kind of struck me as being. A little bit odd. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I I guess I didn't think about that. You're right. Like that would be pretty messed up if somebody did that just to get the clicks or the views or whatever. I've seen I've seen so many crazy things with wildlife that maybe more so than ever. I always I look at things and go, yeah, I don't know. I'm like I I don't know, man. It seems kind of weird. It, like I see things like that. I'm like, I just it just raises. It, little red flags go up, you know, they kind of start popping up and start, I kind of go, start going, what? I don't, I don't know, man. I'm not sure if I'm buying what you're selling. Yeah. Cause you would know, I mean, you're the expert on it. Um, <laughs> Things just seem weird all. sometimes. What seen, if, I don't know if I've seen it all, but I've seen some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. What's some of the weirdest stuff you've seen just in the wild though? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's always different. It's funny here over the past couple of weeks, you know, past couple months, I've been, uh, doing, doing some work and seeing more than ever alligators and manatees hanging out together um it, they don't ever have negative interactions uh, actually the manatees usually almost bully the alligators but i'll be catching an alligator and see manatees like hanging out nose to nose with them the entire time while catching them like they're having conversations it's just you start seeing things that are sometimes you see weird stuff you know i don't, I don't know who knows if they're having a conversation about what but it's it kind of makes you wonder or they're or they're yeah they're friends so it's friendly it's not it is yeah they honestly manatees will bully them and run them out of an area there's never been a documented instance with an alligator and a, a manatee going at it just doesn't happen okay that's wow that's that's a fascinating one well we Weird got stuff we got to talk about your uh your big news story the chicago incident with uh explain to my audience that what happened because i i wasn't aware of this thing until i started doing research on you but i guess it was a big story in chicago 
Yeah, um, I just got back from Chicago over the weekend. I uh, was oh. up there for a, for an event. Yeah, um, wow, where do I even start? <laughs> so in 2019, uh, in July of 2019, there was a gator that showed up in Chicago. And it was a, it was a big thing for them. Of course, not, there's not typically alligators in Chicago. It was somebody's pet they had taken and tossed loose. And they had a fella up there running around chasing it for a while. And he realized, I think they realized it was a bit above the, the eye's pay grade. So they reached out to the state of Florida, some different groups down here where I do research. And they all dropped my name and said, hey, if you want the guy, here's one of the longest tenured guys in the state doing it. He's call animals in all kinds of situations. Call and talk to Frank. So got a phone call. And at this point, I remember watching it. It was on CNN. I'm watching them chase this alligator around a park in Chicago. And I'm kind of going, what in the world, man? This is crazy. And <laughs> they had a guy putting out live traps with uh, chicken and peanut butter or something. It was some kind of like weird things. I'm going, I don't know what planet that makes any sense, <laughs> but you know, Hey, the, the guy's, the guy's doing what he can. He's trying to figure it out. I remember they called me, we worked it out. Uh, they flew me up there and I I'm going to this park and it's on the kind of on the Southwest side of Chicago. It's called Humboldt park. And I pull into this park and there's dozens of news crews I mean, it had become like a, it become a big thing in Chicago. There's dozens of news crews of people selling buttons and t-shirts and there's food trucks. And like wow. the whole community had come out to this thing. And it was the opposite. Of a lot of stuff we were just talking about where, you know, crocodilians sometimes get seen in a negative light. Yeah. This was something that brought like this entire community out and got them excited and brought them all together. And like, man, there's something cool that we don't ever have that's here right now. And we're so excited to see it. Everybody's like walking around. Everybody's got binoculars and they're looking for this little alligator in this park. And I went, what in the world did I get myself into? This is insane. Um, so ended up telling them, like, look, if you guys want me to work this out, you got to you got to shut the park down. This is a park that's in the center of like a million people, you know, in the, in this, on this part of Chicago. It's a busy, busy, it's a huge, busy park. And they ended up shutting the park down. And uh, I went out there that night, was able to call him out of where he was hiding. Huge park. And hook him up with a fishing rod, catch him. And that just, uh, that was the whole thing. You know, I ended up throwing out a first picture of the Cubs game. A lot of blessings come from that. It was, it was, uh, it was like an amazing thing after amazing thing, which wasn't what I was looking for. You know, I just wanted to go up there and help an animal that was in distress. And I was, I was hoping to catch him, get on a plane and get the heck out of Dodge, man. And nobody even knew I was there. Like a ghost in the darkness, you know, just there and gone. But also all these other amazing things that come of it, um, actually, WGN from up there in Chicago had come, has come down here and caught gators with us and done research with us in the Kennedy Space Center. A lot of amazing stories out there from all that. Um, found out like a, I guess a year after that, that I had a heart issue that I didn't know about. Um, and I do this work because I love it. You know what I mean? I, I do my, I do this job because I have a lot of fun with it. I, I, I get something from it. Uh, I get to work with an animal I love. I get to give back to people and help people. And uh, it's just, it's been my calling since I was a kid. So I've just been been something I've always enjoyed. Couldn't find a doctor to do the heart surgery because I had chest surgery as a kid, had a, bunch of, had a bunch of scar tissue in my chest. WG and up there in Chicago helped me fund the doctor who did my surgery, ended up doing the surgery. And then they fundraised the money and paid all my health bills off. So in my opinion, as a person of faith, it makes me understand why I was put there in the first place in this weird story and it's a really weird situation. I mean, it's it's one of them grace of God kind of things. I mean, there's zero doubt about it, in my opinion. That's there's great. been a lot of other amazing things from that too, but that's some of the highlights. Yeah, that's wow, that's amazing. Oh, that's that's such a cool story, such a good thing for you, but also for the work that you're doing. So it's shining a light on this and and bringing awareness, right? No joke. Yes, sir, yeah. for sure. That's really good. Um, yeah. So, but that that uh, alligator, they call him the chance chance the snapper. Is that what? It Indeed. Yeah. They had a, a naming contest block club Chicago did, which actually I was just up there for their five-year anniversary uh, last week. They, their whole, their whole nonprofit, it's a, uh, it's a media nonprofit. They got started really with this story. This, this is what put them on the map. Mm. And now they're a, you know, they're a, a huge organization there in Chicago doing great things. It, this story has blessed so many people, you know, but they had a, a naming contest of the alligator. It was between Frank Lloyd bite, uh ruth gator ginsburg uh croc obama uh. or <laughs> chance the snapper and yeah. they had like everybody in the communities voting on it and stuff and they ended up voting in uh yeah chance the snapper which i okay. guess is a play on chance the rapper yeah, yeah i've yeah. still never heard anything from chance the rapper but i i, 
I feel bad saying that, but <laughs> yeah, that's who, that's who wanted out, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So um, I heard you talking about it too, where you said that uh, you were able to tell because people are like, how the hell did an alligator get in Chicago? And you were able to tell based on um, his snout that, and his, and his eyes that the snout had been like pushed up against, a, it was deformed because he had pushed up against like a door or a cage or something. And the eyes were lighter because it'd been in darkness. So you were able to tell that this, this thing had been like locked up in a cage basically. Yeah. He had been in captivity his whole life. Yeah. Exactly what you're saying. He'd been in a container too small for him, which kind of kept his nose pushed in and his nose was bent up. He's a, he doesn't have those issues anymore. He's a big, beautiful alligator, you know, so they, that's good to hear. They were looking for somewhere for him to be up there in Chicago, but the, you know, the field museum and the Lincoln park zoo and all those guys, they, are, they all had alligators. They didn't have any room for any more alligators. Mm. And the St. Augustine alligator farm down here in Florida ended up taking him uh, Southwest airlines, put him on a plane and flew him down here special. It was pretty dang neat. Yeah. So they never caught the guy that, I mean, I'm assuming this was some sort of illegal pet that someone had brought to Chicago. From what I gather, uh, they're common in drug houses in Chicago. So I remember my, on my second trip up, I got a call from one of the commanders of one of the districts of uh, up there in Chicago. And he's like, hey, Frank, so I understand you're in town. I said, yeah, I'm in, I'm in town. He goes, well, you just did a drug raid and we got this gator. Can you take it back home with you? I said, sir, I, I can't just stick it on a plane. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just stick him in my bag and take him back on the plane with me. It doesn't work that way. But. Like it has to be, you know, it's a federally protected species. It has to be done the correct way. But they apparently it's a yeah, it's a common thing in drug houses in, in Chicago. Just like they get these alligators just for fun or something, or what? I don't know if it's their version of a pit bull or I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the idea is. that they think it's something protecting things or what, but I've heard about it on multiple instances up there. Wow, that is something I did not know about. That is really bizarre. Okay. Yeah, because I was gonna ask you, how common is it? that people keep alligators as pets either legally or illegally? Um, there's, there's some people that do it the right way. You know, it's, uh, there's not, not many, but there's, I'm sure there's tons of people. I hear stories quite often of people that keep them illegally. I know up there, they said they get them, they get them with Chicago animal care and control quite often. Okay. Wow. That's really drug houses. Okay. I just never would have, this is why I love doing these interviews. I learned so much. Fascinating. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you mentioned uh, earlier about the alligators, how you're learning from them and the endocrine system. So yeah, talk about that, how we can learn uh, cures for humans. Cause I, I something about the alligator blood can lead to antibiotics and uh, their, they, their, uh, their blood has like antibiotic and antiviral properties like built into it automatically. It does. Yeah, it's one of the top immune systems in the world uh, for many for many reasons, but that's the, the easy way to break it down. Yeah, they have antimicrobial and antiviral and bacterial properties part of their blood. So their blood kills every known virus and bacteria on contact. Like one drop of alligator blood will wipe out the, the AIDS virus right then. It'll knock it, it'll knock it out. Uh, where this gets complicated with people is the fact that them being a cold-blooded animal, they have a nucleated red blood cell. So it's not something that's easily transferable over to us, mm. and they have a anti, they have a coagulation factor that we still can't quite understand. So I mean, that's what's, what allows them to like lose a limb or lose uh, any kind of body part, and their blood turns to jelly like almost immediately, and it'll it it you know it'll, it'll almost heal itself right then and there. It'll it'll coagulate, and they're good to go. They'll stop bleeding. It's something that'll probably I mean it could if we can figure this stuff out. Uh, there's huge metal, medical advancements from it. And a lot of the research we've been working on for ages is actually cancer research too, because we've found out that they can, they can repair their own chromosomes. So uh, the University of Louisville is taking their blood and treating it with chromium, watching those chromosomes break, and then try to re trying to re-engineer how they're, how they're going about that. Because that's not the cure to like one type of cancer, that's the cure to everything. That's a cure to a lot, a lot of things that ail us. Wow. Fascinating. Okay. Just want to make sure people don't drink alligator blood. That's probably not a good idea, but no, no, it's, uh, there's, yeah, it's no, no, no alligator blood cocktails, please. But, uh, but we can learn from it by studying it. And like you said, reverse engineering it and such. Yeah. There's tons of there, not tons, but there's a handful of doctors out there right now in universities that are working on that specifically. Okay. And then, yeah, talk about the, um, the, how we, the, the alligator, like the wetlands and like how we, cause they also, the alligators, I read something about like they increase plant diversity and provide habitat for the other animals. Like it's, it's an important part of the ecosystem, right? Yeah. They're a keystone species for multiple reasons. You know, like 
we were talking about earlier, we, we touched on the feeding of the other wildlife, which yeah. they, they provide food for everything. They also, you know, the, them making caves is a big part of providing habitat for other animals. They'll, they'll go in a bank and they'll dig an area out and they'll get in there and get set up. That's home for turtles and fish and all kinds of other things. They do spread, like a lot of animals, they do spread seeds and things around too as they move around. They, uh, you know, the American alligators, the only conservation success story when it comes to crocodilians, 84%, 85% of the crocodilian species around the world are critically endangered. I mean, on the verge of being wiped out. The alligator's the only one that's ever made a comeback. Okay, yeah, and then, so they they also eat these. Uh, what are these things called? The nutrias that are those things cause a lot of damage to the wetlands, and so nutrias, armored catfish, nutrias? Uh, pythons. You name the thing that's not supposed to be there. Alligators are eating it. What was the yeah? Speaking of pythons, I was going to ask you about that because you had this video on your Instagram where there was a giant python in a lady's restroom, and it was behind the toilet. Uh, I mean, how did the person find it? And hopefully, I mean, if so, if you just sat down on that toilet and you didn't know that snake was there, would it have attacked her or like? No, it was just, it was a ball python. It was just somebody's, somebody's pet that had got loose, which is the story of the day in Florida. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dear goodness, people, people letting their, letting their pets loose is just, uh, it's one more thing. But yeah, I, the state of Florida had called me about that and said, yeah, there's a python in a, in a restroom. Can you go pick it up? And I said, yeah, I reckon I can, you know, and there you go. Went over there and it was, that was something somebody had spent some money on. That was, uh, people spend the money, so much money on these morphs or, uh, these non-natural pythons. So they, they breed them with each other and get these, what they call morphs or different genetic turnouts of them, uh, variations. And they have all these fancy names for them and pay crazy money for them. If you've never heard of this, you should look it up. Yeah. Look up I've ball, never heard python, of that. Ball, ball python morphs and You'll see every kind of crazy name you've ever heard of in your entire life and people spending stupid amounts of money on them. So why and this was one of those guys that they had lost. So they try to, they morph it to make it uh, bigger, more uh, vicious or what, like scarier? Or? No, just changing colors, colors and patterns. Oh. That's what they're all about. Okay. People are never, you know how, you know how we are, man. Nothing's ever good enough the way it is. Let's make it, let's make it our own and do something fancy with it. I kind of prefer things they are the way they are in the, in the first place, but I'm a weirdo that well, way. Especially with wildlife and nature. Like you, you don't want to screw with mother nature. I feel like it's going to come back to bite you. I mean, that's it's just what we do, Bubba. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so the alligators are, they're doing good. You said, but um, cause there was some issues with, uh, even though they have tough immune systems, there's issues with uh, diseases jumping from species are. to species. And you don't, you said there's no answer to this. Yeah, it's a lot. It's things that are being worked on right now. You know, UF is doing a lot of that stuff. There's uh, the more you bring. That's the the real danger with these exotic or invasive species are the diseases that they bring with them and spread. It's not the fact that they're here. Once these animals are here and already set up, which they are in Florida, you're not really going to get rid of them. It's what it's the diseases and the uh, the parasites and the fungus and the different you know the fungi they bring with them that you got to worry about. It's not the specifically the animal itself. It's so it's so crazy. I mean, like pythons in South Florida, that ship has sailed, buddy. They're here to stay. Um, there's people that are working on trying to reduce their number and doing things, but they're you're not going to ever get them all out of there. It's so you could argue that about that about them, about Cuban tree frogs, about a million other things in in Florida that are that are here in number. Iguanas, iguanas ain't going nowhere either. You know, it's just it's something that people have to wrap their heads around. Because some of these things were not natural to these environments and people brought them as pets or something and then they just th flourished. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, people moving things around. Okay. Messing things up like we do all the time. That's that's what we do. Yeah. So what is, how do we, is there a way to, to fix this just by having these conversations and trying to bring awareness or? Uh, talking about it, you know, education is always the key to everything. Uh, like what you were talking about with the alligator feeding issues. It's something that's been being talked about forever, yet it still continues. Uh, these wildlife issues are things that have been getting talked about forever, but they still continue. I think, you know, it's it's like with pollution, maybe, you know, it's the same kind of situation until you can get everybody on the same page, understanding, like, look, we have a major problem. It's time for us all to get on board and start making a difference. Until you get everybody to get on board, you ain't going to really be able to make a huge difference. You need everybody to be on the same page. You're going to have a clean cup of water. And, you know, there's 100 people around that water and nobody's putting oil in it. But one person, one person puts the oil in, the whole cup's ruined. You know, you got to you got to get everybody on board. 
Yeah. Well, and it, so it sounds like the, the TikTok and some of this shit is making it's going taking us backwards, is what you're saying. Well, <laughs> social media when it comes to uh people doing silly things is a whole yeah, that's a whole thing. But when it comes to, you know, again, a lot of these issues, the the it's these are hard conversations that people have to be real about and be giving good information and hoping that everyone's jumping on board and going, yeah, let's do, let's do that. Let's make a difference. Everybody get together and make a difference and until we do. It's just, you're kind of just spinning your wheels. Yeah. Cause I just think alligators and, and crocodiles, I mean, I think sharks, there's so many animals that are so cool, but then sometimes they get a bad rap. Like, Oh, these are evil creatures. And like, like sharks, especially, I think there's a lot of like, Oh, you need to kill sharks because they hurt people. And, it's like, no, that's like, why? <laughs> that's their instinct. People like, hurt more people than any animal hurts, you know? What's that? People hurt more people than any animal hurts people. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. It, it didn't. So, and you can hunt alligators in Florida. Is that, that's a, that's a big uh, money. That's a big way the state makes, uh, makes money for their other programs. And for the, for that program too, is yep. The public water hunt, they call it. Uh, I forget how it works. It's something you can spend a certain amount of money maybe it's 2500 bucks so i think if you're a resident and they'll give you two two tags to go out and get two alligators and uh, something along those lines and it still doesn't it's it's not enough i mean they're not obviously giving too many tags to where it's going to hurt the population though yeah that one's above my pay grade buddy (laughs) i mean because that's something that seems like that you'd be concerned about i mean well i guess if there's four million i guess they're they're doing four million in louisiana we have we have a solid million here in the state of florida yeah Oh, could yeah, it's, you it's, not it's hunt a in big, Louisiana? Uh, I don't know if they have a public water hunt in Louisiana or not. I'm honestly not sure. But people, I know Georgia does now, and I know that I believe South Carolina does. North Carolina was in the talks about it. I don't know if they ever went there. I'm not sure if Louisiana does or not. Hmm. Do you think? I mean, so ethically, do you think it's wrong to to hunt alligators? I think there's. So if we're going outside, we're not talking about hunting in general, if we're talking about the the need of these animals to be taken sometimes, if an animal's hurt a person, that animal has to go. It's just, it's a sad, it's a, it's a sad thing. Again, it's, it's terrible for the animal and the person mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever was hurt, but there's some times where it's the right idea to move on from an animal. If it talks about, you're talking about hunting about hunting them. Yeah. I just, I just try to stay away from that one. Yeah. Do you have, um, do you have pets yourself in your house? I do. I have a, a army of Shelties. Yeah, I have I have three shelties. And okay. we keep we keep some alligators for educational programs, but not here in my place. Okay. But you're working with I mean, you're with them all the time, like out in the wild and every day. Every day. And other and other yeah, and snakes too, and possums and what other animals yeah. do you work with? Yeah. So we so through my nonprofit ears, it's environmental education, awareness, research, support, and services. We do uh, you know, do our gator work. We do some crocodile work, like I said, in Belize. And we uh we also do biodiversity studies. So we'll go to different properties and we'll set up arrays and look at animals traveling back and forth between different habitat types to help these uh, different areas update their land management plans, see what's there, see the health of the environment in the different areas. And yeah, it's every day is different stuff. Snakes uh, of all kinds and flavors, as you can might imagine, a lot of different mammals. It's whatever's traveling back and forth through it. What is it? So the, the biggest snakes are anacondas, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We don't have to worry about those in Florida, thankfully. No, but it, so is that, is there like the movie Anaconda? Like, is there any, <laughs> is there any truth to that? Like, can a snake eat a person? Sure. There's snake species that can eat people for sure. <laughs> that's like a giant crazy. telephone pole, you know what I mean? An anaconda. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, imagine walking across and tripping on a telephone pole in the middle of water that would probably be knee deep or deeper. Yeah. You'd be having a bad day if you were wading around in water with telephone poles that could eat you. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be some scary shit. <laughs> That's a scary one. That would you probably ever, not be the way you'd want to spend your day. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you ever worry about getting hurt from the snakes or the alligators? Like just working with, I mean, cause that's a, there's a risk involved, right? No, I've caught thousands and thousands of alligators. Um, sure. There's risk involved, but you, you manage the risk by using this thing. The good Lord put in your head called a brain, <laughs> you know what I mean? And using some tools. Yeah. You, it's not like the, the goofy TV shows that again, aren't, aren't reality where you see, you know what today we're going to put, we're going to swim to the bottom of the pond. And we're going to make sure the hook is on the alligator very well. No, that's not the real world. Uh, you, you catch the animal, you use tools and you use your brain 
And if you've done it enough times, you know safely what you can get away with. You know, okay, safely I can do this, this, and this, and I'll be okay. And you do it the same way methodically every single time until you need to, sometimes you got to vary it a little bit here or there, because of course things are going to change. But you do it the same way, you know what's safe, you do it the right way for you and the animal, and you move on to the next one. Yeah, and it's somebody told me, I was, I told them that I was uh, having you on in there from Florida, and they said, oh, I, I heard that... Uh, if you if you see an alligator in the wild, you're supposed to run in a zigzag. And then I heard you say that's total BS. So because well, there's so many alligator things going to get that. you, they're going to they're going to get you. It's going to be too quick. You're not going to be able to run. Let's say you meet the one, the rogue alligator, like the one in a thousand I meet that has murder on his mind. I mean, it's legit one in a thousand, probably more. He's a legitimate rogue, bad dude, just like people. You probably meet one in a thousand people that go, man, I don't want to hang out with that guy. He's bad news. Well, you let's say you meet that one and he he wants to catch you and you're on the edge of the water, you're not gonna ever know it's even coming. It's gonna be it's they're not there's hardly even gonna be a splash. You're just gonna be gone. And I've always taken peace in that. <laughs> but yeah, you're not gonna he's not gonna chase you. Uh you're not gonna have time to run in zigzags. Uh you're not gonna even have time to go off oh, poop. It's just gonna be done. Okay. Um yeah, it's gonna. If the key like is to avoid happen, those areas where that they might be lurking. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to be around water, dawn or dusk. You don't want to be. Uh, you don't want to be around the edge of the water, knelt down any time of the day. You just, it's 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 those common sense kind of things. You know, people have lost common sense and and all aspects of life, and everybody is so complacent these days that thinks nothing can happen to me. Nothing. I'm I'm safe all the time. Nothing can happen to me. My awareness is super, super low. And the second you think that stuff is when something terrible happens. Uh, it doesn't even have to be with wildlife. That's just that's when terrible things happen and when you get complacent. Hmm. That's good advice. Absolutely. Well, um, so again, your your nonprofit is called uh, E-E-A-R-S. Do I have that right? E-E-A-R-S-S. Yeah, it's ears S-S. with an extra E and extra S. Okay. Yeah, we actually have a podcast as well. Yeah, great. And I'll put the uh, website in the show notes and, and people can donate to that, right? It's yes, sir. Yeah, on our on our main page there, they, there's a donation button for sure. Yeah, it's uh, it it's it costs money to keep everything running and keep uh, keep working with all this wildlife and any help is always appreciated very much. Yeah. It's a big part of the educational outreach and stuff we do as well. So absolutely, very cool. Well, um, hopefully, and maybe could you get some grants or something, or is there the government money that would uh that they could kick in that could help this out as well? We're working on whatever we can figure out, buddy. Believe me, we're working on it. Okay, well, hopefully... I've, this, uh, I've yet to win a grant, but it doesn't mean I haven't <laughs> tried. Dear Lord, okay. it doesn't mean I haven't tried. All right, well, hopefully this uh, brings a little bit more awareness to people, maybe get a few extra donations. And uh, either way, I appreciate you doing it and uh, taking the time. I learned a lot. It's really interesting stuff, so... Yeah, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you for taking the time for me. All right, thanks so much. I'll see you later. All right, see you, buddy. Well, I found a lot of that information extremely interesting, especially the stuff about alligators being common in drug houses crazy stuff so very educational if you want to help spread awareness you can share this episode on social media follow frank on social media and if you can uh, make a donation to his nonprofit. the link to his website and all the so- social media stuff is in the show notes uh, you can support the show by following me and the show on social media and of course make sure you're subscribed to youtube for exclusive content and right now everything is free so take advantage of that I appreciate your support of the show and our guests. Have a great rest of your day. Shoot for the moon.